gathering an audience and uh, dr javid also asked me that uh, there will be wide audience including chemistry and chemistry and biology so fortunately i can also help users in those fields so i am fortunate enough to show you some slides like that also anyway if you not have any advanced kind of presentation it will uh, sort of give a overview of the technique of transmission uh, electron microscopy and uh, basics of that and some flavor using uh, research so um, first um, two three slides about my institute uh, in india we have four centers in fact three centers at indore bombay and kolkata and uh, kolkata kanur which is here towards the south of india it is the extension of indore center and we were uh, started at um, uh, in april 2007 and Our inauguration was happening in April 2011. So these are few moments. Uh, so these are few uh, moments. Uh, high stones uh, for Kalpa Kamno. High stones for Kalpa Kamno. It was conceptualized in 2007. Then, uh, then uh, foundation stone. Foundation stone was in 2009. It was inaugurated in 2011. And this is our building at the bottom. Uh, we have three physical, engineering, and chemical sciences building. We have several characterizations. Equipments are kept. I am correct. Uh, this is the overview. Uh, this is the categorization of the characterization techniques, and uh, this is the broad range of high-end instruments. Uh, we have four uh, scientists here, and Dr. Elvis Chandrasekhar is kind of a scientist in charge. So every instrument uh, is being uh, coordinated by one of us, one of our scientists. So. You can go to this CSR user portal. It is launched just in a new form just one week ago, 
so it is still uh, in uh, process of operation but still you can go and know about the facilities in this csruserportal.com okay now coming to the point so basically my plan will be about uh, transmission electron microscope uh, basics and then explanation with some examples so very simple plan uh, anybody can uh, interrupt me to ask any doubt or questions even during the sir call. sir ask yes, sir yes sir sir slide slide is fluctuating fluctuating uh, yes sir sir uh yes yes is it okay yes sir yes sir now 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 yes sir okay so uh, the nano technology it is uh, not a really very new field it is uh, probably as old as uh, our civilization but uh, on the scientific basis of as laid uh, by rp fenman in 1959 when in an aps meeting he mentioned there is a plenty of room at the bottom so his talk accelerated the research in the direction that ultimately laid the foundation of modern nano technology why because he was mentioning mentioning a very interesting phenomena in materials or in film at a scale about smaller than one meter that is atomic and subatomic scales in fact in nature and in ancient architecture and metallurgy nano plays a big role for The nanometer size of the round like uh, cavities they give rise to the break of feathers bright colors very spectacular really <laughs> this is uh, in the right panel you can see a uh, bowl glass it is called like a glass cup and it is uh, around 500 uh, kg and in transmission it this glass gives a red color whereas in reflection mode it gives a green color so it was like a magical metal glass but the reason was recently it was uh, 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 uncovered in 1920 uh, in 19, uh, 1990 uh, using a tm and uh, synchrotron studies it was uh, uh, revealed that uh, this is nothing but a uh, gold nanoparticle started phenomena which gives color which absorbs in uh, in the uh, the same light is reflected when it is seen in reflected so the field of nanotechnology nobody knew about nano but they have been using it for long so consciousness of what and how of the phenomena and the ability to control it it is where it makes the difference between the old and the modern why because we are able to reason about something which was not known earlier but we are aware of some other superficial things so, so going deep into it means you have to characterize it scientifically and you have to see it now proving or disproving some idea or hypothesis is more acceptable if we see because seeing is believing literally so seeing is our basic instrument that we have been given by nature is our bare eyes which can show us 25 micron objects from a distance of 15 cm then we came to simple microscope like convex lens which can uh, magnify so that we can see the objects up to 5 micrometer then come compound optical microscope which can go down to the refraction limit of 300 nanometers or 0.3 micron but beyond that we don't we don't have anything so nano which is uh, of the order of 10 to 100 of nanometer is a dark world using these above instruments for human eyes and the reliable technique which shapes light in this dark nano world at the bottom of the lens scale is transmission electron microscope and similar many other techniques in fact uh, tm is so important in material science and research uh, excuse me sir yes uh, sir slide is uh, fluctuating again can you share can you share again sir in fact i am using your pen okay i will share again I'm sorry about the inconvenience, but I think uh, there is some uh, lag due to network issue. Now 
Now is it okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So I have uh, started from here. So the ability to control uh, the phenomena it is uh, ma makes a difference between the old and the modern. And in that, the bottleneck was the lack of viewing technology in old time. Hello. Yes, sir. Visible. I mean, presentation is fluctuating still. Yes, sir. Again and again fluctuating. I'm sorry, but uh, I think we have to leave it that because uh, maybe there is some uh, network speed issue, I think. Okay. This slide okay? Still fluctuating. Still it is fluctuating. Yeah, ma'am, actually it is uh, out of my control because I think uh, there is some uh, network delay issue. Uh, so I will wait uh, first slides for some time and uh, I mean, it is not in my control. So I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Okay, this slide is... Oh, no. okay, sir, please, please continue, sir. Okay, this slide is stable. I just uh, uh, no, sir, no, sir. Mm. sir, I think you can share the slide to the organizing team and they can run. Okay, okay. Yeah, that is a good idea, maybe. Okay, I will mail to Dr. Jaivi Singh then. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Jaime Singh. Yes, sir. I emailed you those slides. Yes, Uh, participants, uh, please uh, wait for two, two minutes.
So this slide is showing yeah, the details of um, our uh, instrument HML Kalpakam node. These are really very high end instruments, and uh, the users can use by sending a request to one of these scientists who are uh, in charge of one of these each one of these instruments. So uh, you can go to this uh, csruserportal.com website and you will know about the uh, facilities here. Next slide, please. Next, please. Uh, right. So the plan of the talk will be just uh, very simple. I will tell about transmission electron microscopy, some basics, and uh, then uh, we'll explain with some simple examples. Next, please. Uh, Dr. Javid, you can uh, uh, do it a full screen mode. That PDF view, you can go and uh, you can rest to full screen. In view, you will view. Make it full screen. Yes, sir. We are going to view, view. No, in that same PDF uh, that is open, there is a file, uh, edit, and everything will be there. So, view is there. In the view drop down menu, yeah. not here, not here. You open that uh, PDF uh, presentation. Yes, Uh, full screen. There is a, this full screen mode. In view only, come down, come down. Ah, full ah. screen mode. Yes. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So you can come to that slide, please. 
next next yeah so uh, yeah so the nanotechnology it is uh, in fact uh, not a very new field except that uh, we started to learn about it scientifically from the very this century uh, from uh, when almost uh, rp fenman mentioned about it there is a lot of room at the bottom and why because we are not able to see the things because seeing is the believing so next so the modern bottleneck was uh, the lack of viewing technique in, in old times nobody knew that some phenomena are due to small things or, or the smallness of the material because, because it was not possible to see at that, that narrow scale okay because i think it is seeing is believing next yeah next please because proving or disproving any idea or hypothesis is more acceptable if you see our eyes can show you 25 micron objects you can use simple convex lens then you can see 5 micron objects you can use compound optical microscope and you can nowadays go down up to the diffraction limit of 0.3 meter but beyond that light cannot help us because the nano world is a dark world because of that for you guys and a reliable technique which is right in the dark nano world at the bottom of the lens scale it is only recently invented recently means it is in uh, 1940s uh, or 50s and the transmission electron microscope and magnetic techniques to start the world The important importance of uh, the TEM can be seen from these uh, two Nobel prizes, which are awarded to the discoveries for which fundamental technique was used as TEM. One is uh, 2011 chemistry Nobel prize to uh, the discovery of quasi crystals, and uh, then in uh, it was not the Nobel prize the second one, but it is a very important discovery of uh, carbon nanotubes. In 1991, but later on, when graphene was discovered, and it won uh, the Nobel Prize in 2010. So um, uh, that is the importance of uh, viewing and believing, and its importance in science and technology. Next is so about the uh, transmission electron microscope. After its evolution, it has gone to so many other uh, classification or uh, so many. Uh, variants have been formed and there are their own advantages, but typically two classifications based on two uh, based on the technology, you can uh, use uh, two classifications. One so is conventional TM, which is electron wave optic or it is uh, like the light microscopy, and the other one is scanning TM or STEM, which we say, and it is a scanning probe microscopy, which is a, a, a image. Uh, the electron probe of almost one extra or below one extra size is formed and it scans the sample. And for every pixel, data is collected and reproduced in the computer. I will tell you the basic afterwards. Then the applications of EM mainly in two categories structural characterizations using microscopy and diffractometry, and an analytical characterization that is the chemistry and atomic bonding. Information using so energy dispersive excess spectroscopy DS or electron energy loss spectroscopy DS. And when you combine all these stuff, so, so here it becomes a unique technology, unique technique, technique which, which gives applications, applications in all, all these ways. And the most important thing is that all these characterizations can be done at really, very, very small scale, where there no other technique can be parallel to it. So, so this is a long list. There are so many other things, it is not exhaustive. You name it and you can uh, do it. In fact, the energy biology also, this is a TM is used, and uh, the frozen samples can be viewed. I never worked on them, I uh, want to work on it, so I am not able to tell much about that. But that is an important field. Next, please. So, starting from the concept of magnification, and because magnification is at the heart of in any microscopic technique. But resolution is a more important thing which has to be conserved for a med any meaningful magnification. This example tells you if you start from the parallel A, which is some object at some magnification, you can see the pixel size. This is a digital, digital pictures. You can see the pixel size. 
And, and it, it makes some sense, sense the picture, picture is clear. Yeah. Okay. okay? Now, now, the thing, thing is, if you, you go to diagonally the opposite the F panel, panel the magnification is same for the same object, object but the, the pixel size are reduced. Are reduced. So, so much reduced. Okay? okay? So, so the, the same pixels, you stretch left, left and right and you try to make magnification, but it doesn't have anything. Okay? So the meaning and information is lost. So information should be preserved. And which is preserved when your resolution is correspondingly good, good. And, and with corresponding to that resolution, only you, you can, can magnify, magnify or, or in fact you can fact usefully magnify. Can so usefully magnify. It all is so boiled boil 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 down to the ability to show correctly. And there is the heart of the any microscopic technique, which is the objective lens or the lens element, which will make the probe. Next please. Next please. So how is the resolution determined? So how is the resolution, resolution determined? Resolution is basically the ability to, to show distinct objects, objects. correct? Huh? So basically, so basically there, there is, is a, some kind of phenomenon of, phenomenon of, of uh, AV disk and diffraction is at the, the heart. So there is on the left so side, there is an object, which is an ideal object, which is, object, which is, which is, an object, which is shown at the below. There is a square shape, rectangular shape, intensity profile, and there are sharp edges too. When actually, but when actually you, you see the little object, object with light, some light, with light, 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 Give you blurred edges. edges. When now, these two objects, when these, blurred edges, when objects, these two objects, uh, suppose similar objects, they are then uh, you can approximate, you can then distinguish, you can distinguish between them, or you, you can distinguish, distinguish, distinguish between them, them or so you cannot distinguish the between them. So, are the means if they are overlapping, if they are overlapping, to their half maxima, then will be visible the as the two same. objects ah, will so see as will be limit of diffraction and visible as the same. Ah, so that is the limit of diffraction and it depends on the wavelength of the light that you are using. What Next is piece. that? So typically uh, what is that? He I do a stuff is that the objects of you can see of the order of the size then the, light the wavelength of the light, of the light okay. you are using so to see. Why okay. So that's why the diffraction limit for optical microscope is typically 300 nanometer, which is the wavelength which is the smallest wavelength light that you can see. see smaller and smaller. So in order to see smaller and smaller things, to smaller and smaller. Reduce the lambda or the wavelength to smaller and smaller. Okay. X-ray is also photon. X-ray photon wavelength is of the order of one angstrom. So one can see the atom. I mean, because the X-rays, but X-rays there are no lenses. When you go to electron, which when accelerate, when you go to electron, and there is a formula here, which when accelerate, the electron is defined, and there is a formula here, voltage V, the wavelength. Can be where the wavelength of the electron is defined, it depends on its acceleration voltage V. And it is a wave, so it is a radiation, and you can shine material with electron. The wavelength both can, can be brought down Next to place. the order of atomic dimensions. And it is so a wave, is so it is a radiation. This is the truth, and, and you can shine the material with electron to the principal electron. Which size? So in fact, these wavelengths are very, 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 very small as compared to the atomic dimension of one axon. You can go up to 0 0.2, 0.0 grams per wavelength for 200 kV microscopes. Okay, but the thing is, there is something called abrasion which will reduce this ability of electrons to show. To that resolution. I will explain you later. Next, please. I already mentioned the excess cannot be used even if uh, they are highly, oh, so much used to uh, determine the structure of materials by diffraction. Okay, because in the process of forming magnified images, the diffraction pattern has to be convoluted, and then only it will form. A large or magnified image, but there are no lenses for X rays. But diffraction can happen anywhere, so that's why X rays are used. But if there are some day, there will be some day an X ray lens, then all the TMs will be useless. But fortunately, this is not a day, so we will forget about X ray now and continue with the electron. Next, please. Okay, this is the basic flowchart of the operation. You have a probe which will extract information from a specimen and that probe 
has to travel through the environment. So the interaction of environment is also important. You cannot be forget. And then from the interaction of the specimen, you can see that colorful arrow, which means you have extracted some information and those information we cannot perceive. So you have to use detectors and analyzers. Now, all these things, since TEM is highly, highly, highly instrument oriented uh, technique. So at every stage, there are some errors introduced and there has to be some trade off maintained. Very importantly, the environment has to be in vacuum because electrons are highly interacting with matter. So in order to travel, the gas also can absorb them. So you should not have any gas, it should be vacuum. Everything should be in the vacuum. Next slide, please. Now, interaction with electron of the matter, interaction of matter with electron will give you all these signals. So I have, there are n number of signals, but the important signal that we routinely use for analytical and structural studies are these four. Huh? First, if you uh, shine from top, the bottom, whatever direct thick arrow is there, that is direct beam, which will make you TM, regular TM, which is called bright field image. Then you have some elastically scattered electrons, which will give rise to diffraction and dark field image. It is towards the left side of the circle. Then you go to the right bottom, right side uh, bottom, inelastically scattered electrons. So there is some energy loss in the material and uh, that energy loss is equal to the characteristic uh, electron uh, electronic shells in the electronic energy levels in the material. So there is characteristic energy loss which comes in the electron energy loss spectroscopy. It is a highly demanded technology nowadays and its resolution is very high. Then you go on the top, top right, the circle, characteristics X-rays and uh, it is the X-ray spectroscopy by the same characteristic X-rays. It is called EDS spectroscopy. Next please. <clears throat> so these are the typical properties of the electrons. If you have 200 kV electrons, it is, its speed is about 0.7 of the speed of light. And the current achieved is a few picoampere in a TEM. And the beam size is a few angstrom. And if you remove the aberration, if you correct the aberration, you can go up to below one angstrom also. And the nature is real. Its wavelength is 0 0.0285 angstrom. And it is strongly interacting with the matter. Next, please. Now, there is an analogy between the optical microscope and transmission electron microscope. And uh, all the objects which are there in our light microscope, everybody knows us, knows it. So you replace the light with electrons. You replace the light glass lens with the magnetic electron lens. And you remove the environment, you bring it to vacuum. And everything else is same. Huh? All the optics, all the physical principles are the same. And uh, right side, there is a picture of our uh, transmission electron microscope. Uh, so on the top is electron gun, which will emit the electrons. Then below it uh, is condenser lens, which will make the which will make the pro pro electron beam huh? parallel or pointed. Then there is objective lens where the sample is kept. It will it is the most important lens in the microscope, any microscope. And the specimen is held in the objective lens itself. Then come below projector lens. Projector lens uh, is the uh, lens which will project the diffraction pattern or the image onto the screen, which is at the bottom. Next, please. And uh, the important phenomena is the diffraction. Like X-rays, the same drag law is applied here. You know the materials are the grating. They are the plain parallel planes, uh, lattice where the atoms are placed in any crystal material. Now, those lattice planes, they act as grating to incoming electron beam and then there is a direct beam and there is a diffraction beam. So the diffraction is as per the Bragg's law and you get spots or rings on the screen. So that is very important. Using a name on the nanoscopic area, you can form you can you can form a diffraction pattern and find out the characterization of that. Such a characterization, very important tool. So these are the typical examples of the lattice images and corresponding diffraction pattern. Huh? On top, you can see there is a linear rating, and you see two spots. Center spots is the direct beam. One spot you can show that inset is huh? the black inset on the top one. So uh, that corresponds to the lattice spacing. Below is a square kind of uh, grating, and you can see the similarly 
the corresponding diffraction pattern. Okay. Next case. So, uh, this is slightly more uh, involved um, uh, ray diagram of uh, electron optics in TEM when we operate it in the left diffraction mode or in imaging mode. So, the different you can see the objective lens, uh, you can see uh, um, uh, objective lens is uh, here on the top where the specimen is kept and uh, from there you can see a small circle written diffraction pattern on the left. Huh? So, always, always there is a diffraction pattern TEM. Now, if you come below, there is an intermediate lens. This intermediate lens at the center, you can see this selects either the diffraction pattern or the image what should you project on the screen. So, correspondingly, at the below, the a diffraction pattern will be there or the image will be there. Huh? So, there are apertures there in TM huh? which can be a, which uh, you can select, uh, which you can select a specific area of the sample or the specific area of the diffraction pattern which you can analyze more deeply. Next please. Yeah, I was mentioning about uh, objective lens which is the heart of the microscope, any microscope and any like any lens, magnetic lenses of electrons are also not perfect. So, what do you mean by perfection or in scientific language you call it abrasion. Any lens which is abrasion. Abrasion means it doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't treat all the rays of light throughout the uh, throughout its aperture. Okay, means if you see in the below image on the top, the parallel beam is coming from left on the lens, and the lens is focusing them and to a sharp point, as you can see in the right. Huh? So this is an ideal case. But the, in reality, the beams which are the light beams, the rays which are coming towards the edge of the lens, they are focused more sharply. So, they will sharp before the rays coming from the center. So, distribution of this, okay. So, at a plane where you are recording, where all the rays were supposed to focus, it will not focus, so there will be distribution and there will be blur point here, right, which is the sign of abrasion. Mm -hmm. The main, most important two abrasions, one is chromatic abrasion. It is because the electron energy is slightly less or more than what is achieved. Like for example, in 200 kV microscope, 0.7 EV. The 0.7 EV energy plus or minus, it will give rise to some abrasion. Then there is spherical, spherical abrasion, which just now I told you. The ray coming at the center and at the edge, they will be bent more or less sharply. So, these two are most important abrasion and you have to live with that even though some technological developments are going on to remove this abrasion to a certain limit and uh, in fact you can reduce the energy of electron in TM by abrasion corrected microscopes. Next please. <coughs> uh, okay, so I already told you just to mention again the TM resolution is limited to one angstrom. Why? Even though the probe wavelength is 0 0.025 angstrom, because there is abrasion in plane. Uh, now, what the abrasion will look like? Mostly, all everybody of us may be knowing, but just to give an idea to those who uh, should know what uh, what kind of uh, bad magnetic lenses are there in TM. Uh, if you show me a next slide, uh, I, have, I have given a, just a picture of few beautiful flowers. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the real world, huh? but uh, if you want to show this world using a lens which has some abrasion, uh, next slide please. Uh, so with chromatic abrasion your world will look like this. If our eyes have that kind of abrasion that the TM microscope is having, so this kind of world you will be looking, there is chromatic abrasion. Then next slide please, and this is this slide. So you can understand uh, how bad the magnetic lenses are there and how much scope is there still for improvement in this TEM technology. Next, please. Yeah, uh, coming to the next two uh, technology, um, um, sorry, the technical type, STEM, standard transmission electron microscope, how it works and the, about the electron spectroscopy, I have given this example. You can see at the right side top, there is a lattice, so this is a representative of sodium chloride lattice. You can see that 
there are sodium and chlorine ions in arranged in lines okay now this crystal i can align in certain direction and you will see that there are columns okay columns of sodium 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 and columns of chlorine 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 or a column having both sodium and chloride also so if you see towards the light uh, towards the side where i have written a specimen and there are you can see blue and the yellow circles so these represent the columns of those atoms there can be different combinations okay now you go up where i am showing electron source so electron source will start from the top electron source will start top and uh, there will be pro forming lens and it will make a very sharp very fine probe of uh, typically say one angstrom now i will make it scan along this specimen pixel by pixel pixel by pixel pixel by pixel okay then some signals will be generated and those signals will be a function of what atomic column the electron is seeing now after the transmission from the sam sample you can come down there is a blue big disk huh which i am writing i am written here annular dark field detector which is hollow at the center there is a this is a hollow at the center okay this some electrons will transmit it through this and some electrons which are scattered they will hit the blue disk huh so that electrons that hit the blue disk that those are scattered electrons now scattered electrons in earlier times they were considered to be useless but later on they that the scattered electrons have very rich information about what kind of atoms they are scattering to okay the scattering is typically of the from the z square typically in that kind of thing okay where z is atomic uh, number and then that information can be processed during computer and if you go to the right i have shown a ste image okay so when the sample is there if you see the ste image when the sample is there it is scattering so the light is there so the sample will look white and all the other area through which there is no scattering it will look black okay so you can see very bright very sharp contrast is there the image is very very clear okay that is one advantage of ste imaging now you come to the red ray okay the electrons which are transmitting through the hole well, and they are going to the energy filter so this is energy filter which is a magnetic filter so different energy electrons will bend at different uh, curvature and those will be analyzed using camera there will be camera capture will be cap camera will capture both and computer will analyze and it will give you the spectra which is called electron energy loss spectrum and the transmission electrons will also give you the tm image now the tm image is where the electrons are stopped where the material was there the electrons are stopped so the material will look black but from where the electrons are transmitted that area will be going now you can see stm image and tm image there are two differences one the contrast is opposite huh stm image the material is bright and tm image the material is black okay so the more dense material more black is there and second thing contrast is better in stm image now come back to this uh, center part of this uh, center top where i'm showing the ds spectra okay the electrons interacting with the specimen they are generating characteristic x rays and those characteristic x rays are the characteristic fingerprint signature of the element and those element spectra are recorded and that gives you the chemistry so two ways edx gives you one analytical and eels will give you another analytical technique next please and one typical uh, difference between these uh, analytical uh, spectroscopy technique of em tm is uh, the resolution basically and uh, uh, the ability of uh, the intensity recording now on the top panel top right panel purple uh, spectra you are purple background spectrum you are seeing it is electron energy loss spectrum the energy spectrum intensity falls very sharply almost exponentially with the energy loss so yeah i can say that uh, almost uh, beyond 1500 ev there is no meaningful spectra obtainable huh but the thing is resolution is 1 ev it is excellent it is excellent when especially you are having the resolution of one and some special resolution but below if you go the ed spectra its uh, spectrum yield is good 
and uh, you can record the uh, spectra up to 20, 25,000 EV also, but the energy reserve is low, very poor, 125 EV. So, only uh, gross information can be obtained by EVS, but more fine information, even about the valence band and chemistry can be, can be obtained more precisely by EVS spectrum. Next please. Now, the very important part of TM characterization is the specimen itself because there are so many restrictions on the specimen because of highly interacting nature of electrons with material. If your material is very thick, okay, all the electrons will get absorbed by it and there will be no output signal, okay. So, ideally, if the thickness of material should be as small as possible, preferably below 50 nanometer. Okay, and if the material is high Z material, still low, 20 nanometer. Vacuum compatible material should be there. Because if you put a material which is evaporating, uh, which has evaporating uh, uh, components in it, the vacuum will deteriorate, it will contaminate the TM, and uh, it will make so many depositions. So the vacuum material should be high vacuum compatible. And importantly, it should be non-magnetic because there are two problems. One, magnetic material will go by, it will be attracted by the high magnetic field of the lens which is on the order of 2 tesla and it will go and stick in the lens, the microscope will go bad. Second thing, the magnetic field itself will get uh, deformed within the specimen, the electron beam will go very crazy dancing uh, stuff in the specimen itself and the resolution will be lost, you will not be able to record useful. There are different spec, uh, different TM for Characterization magnetic sample, so I am not covering that topic. So, next please. Uh, just about how we deposit the material. Uh, bulk sample should be thin to thickness below 20 and 50 nanometer by special techniques. And nano powder characterization is a bit easier because you can uniformly suspend them in alcohol by ultrasonication, very simple. And I put it down on a TM grid. If you can see this right side bottom yellow. This is a copper weight which is covered with some very thin polymer material and you put a drop on that. You dry it, you evaporate and dry it thoroughly and then you insert in TM. This is a TM holder, the big stick kind of thing, it is a TM holder and you characterize it. Thank you. Um, next slide, next slide please. Yeah, so some typical images, very quick images. Uh, these are two, three, and many layer graphenes. Uh, one user um, uh, parametrically, how uh, they have used, uh, they brought us uh, these uh, excellent samples. So, towards the right, this is the low resolution image, and that uh, dotted circle, when we have did uh, high resolution imaging, you can see this uh, two, two layer graphene, three layer graphene, many layer graphene, beautiful samples. Uh, next, please. Yeah, these are different typical materials. Uh, uh, towards the right, it is uh, the silver dendrite, and uh, in fact, the uh, single crystal dendrites. Uh, in the middle column, you can see the low resolution structure, low magnification. In the right side, the big panel, you can see high resolution. You can, I don't know whether you are able to see the lattice fringes, but uh, throughout the sample, the lattice fringes are continuous. So it is showing that it is single crystal dendrite, not not a, it is a growing proper growing from a single crystal domain. Towards the left below, it is a below left, there is a starfish kind of structure, no? Uh, that is a silver nanoparticle with faceted growth. Next, please. Uh, you can see different uh, defect structure of the materials. Uh, left side, you can see multiple carbon nanotubes, its core, and uh, the bending defects in that. Right side, you can see indium oxide, single crystal material, and uh, you can see there are some defects here. You can see black black spots here and there. Those are the defects. Huh? You can see the atomic level uh, things. Why is studying these things are important? Because the structure and defects they are highly influential in determining the determining the properties of material, mechanical, electrical, electronic everything. Next, please. Yeah, these beautiful samples of iron oxide nanoparticles, magnemite nanoparticles, and the particles themselves they are making super assembly. It is like uh, you can uh, like uh, atoms they arrange in the lattice. No, these are the nanoparticles so uniform in the size that they are 
perfectly making uh, hexagonal closed pack structure. Uh, so in, uh, by TN you can characterize, we have characterized these samples very beautifully. Next is. <coughs> Yes. Yes, it is visible. Yeah, yeah, we are after this. Yeah. So this uh, structure uh, property relationships are very important. Uh, so these, uh, these are the iron oxide nanoparticles which are arranged in a uh, hexagonal closed pack structure uh, very beautifully. They are, um, uh, the uh, particle are so monodispersed that uh, you don't see any distinguishing. You cannot distinguish between the size of these particles. And that's why they are able to make these three-dimensional assemblies which you could characterize using TM. Different directions, in fact. Okay, so this is uh, in the plane on the top, and this is uh, from the top of that, uh, so it is like C axis along the C axis of the examiner tool stacking, and the top one is the ABAB structure. You can see. Next, please. Yeah, so you can also see the uh, 
the electron damage you can do electron damage studies to the materials these electrons can transfer the energy to atoms and this is a multiple carbon nanotubes in which uh, carbon can be displaced if you are giving a 20-25 EV energy to it now 200 EV energy electron can hit a carbon atom they can easily give 40 EV energy to it so as a function of time you can see how the parallel walls they are converting into curly walls and uh, so many defects are there huh? and uh, of uh, in situ or uh, electron radiation studies you can do and in the center there is some other phases also going and uh, we, are we have reported this uh, recently and uh, this is the very new work of this. So this was not possible if we don't uh, characterize it with using TM. Next. Another work that we have done is uh, we have changed. Uh, you see, the carbon materials are very interesting because uh, they have a lot of properties. Depending on the structure, the properties will change. And uh, these uh, carbon black particles, they are very small particles. And uh, uh, you can see. So, how the graphitation has to be changed because they are used in uh, so, um, few applications of. Uh, Conducting composite materials, conducting polymers and all. Uh, so, uh, we wanted to improve, increase the graphitization because if we increase the graphitization, the conductivity will increase. So, what we did is uh, we have uh, catalyzed the carbon black growth using ferrocene catalysts. Now, iron is a catalyst, catalyst for graphitization. So, in this amorphous particle in the top left corner, you can see the low magnification images. And high resolution images images are here. So you can see circular around 20 nanometer size nanoparticles. And towards the right is the electron diffraction. Now you can see beautifully the beautiful uh, rings, circular rings. And those rings correspond to 002 reflection of graphite and uh, 004 reflection of graphite. Okay, but they are amorphous rings, not very sharp rings. Sharp thing means it is highly crystalline, which is not highly crystalline. Now, if you go towards the bottom row. Now, we have used ferrocene to catalyze the growth of carbon, these nanoparticles. In the center, uh, center of the bottom row, you can see the graffiti layers here, uh, where in the green circle. And uh, there are iron oxide nanoparticles also. In fact, they form core shell structure. Around the carbon, uh, sorry, around the iron oxide core, the carbon shell grows. And at some places only, there are high graphitization, high degree of graphitization. And the diffraction pattern is strikingly different. You can see these rings, regular rings, huh? continuous rings. Uh, they are uh, better definitely, they are sharper as compared to earlier, at least to me, things like that. And uh, there are also some speckles, uh, sharp uh, reflections, uh, star kind of things. They are uh, the reflections from iron oxide nanoparticle diffraction pattern. So you can uh, see and uh, you can correlate with the property, the graphitic and the conducting properties here. And uh, we have published it recently. Next, please. The application of uh, this uh, EM, it is also in single crystal, uh, single crystal studies. Uh, now, when user came where to us, uh, they wanted to grow single crystal of uh, these. Uh, uh, Perovskite uh, material is CaFeO 2.5. Now, our here report have been reports have been there by you uh, used by growing the single crystal in oxygen environment. Okay, uh, okay. There, there is a facility uh, with us to grow single crystal using a infrared image furnace, where uh, it is a contactless technique, and uh, this is a long rod. You can see, uh, you can see the scale, no? Uh, top of the scale and the left side there are rods. Huh? They are polycrystalline. Okay, and uh, uh, in the center you can see those shiny rods. Those shiny rods are the made by those polycrystalline. Now, different environment used to grow those metals. Top one is oxygen, then air, and then organ. Then we have seen their uh, we have seen the uh, X-ray pattern, organ X-ray pattern. Characterize, characterize that those are the same materials, CAFE 2.5 crystals. But at the below, we can see those TM images, and you can see that 
oxygen grown and uh, oxygen grown materials they don't have any defects in that so very uh, parallel defectless things are there so those kind of studies can be done next please this is an application of spectroscopy uh, it is a, uh, showing the power of uh, electron energy loss spectroscopy the earlier the two spectra I have shown, uh, where I have shown you the difference in resolution. Now oh, here you can use that difference in resolution. See here, on the top left corner there is a black and white image where there is a blue circle on this. Huh? So this is a regular TM image and uh, it is a gold copper thin film. You can see that yellow arrow. It is deposited on a silicon wafer. That is the at the left part of the blue arrow you can see, and between those two there is a silicon oxide native there. Every silicon wafer it uh, reacts with oxygen on its surface, and about uh, 20 to 40 nanometer uh, thick silicon oxide native amorphous layer is formed. So all these three layers, if you start from left silicon layer, then silicon oxide layer, and then gold copper alloy layer, they all are present. Okay, but they all are black and white. You cannot see. You cannot. We don't know what it is. Now, we did two analysis. One is EDS and the top that uh, yellow peaks are there, no? In the uh, blue background there are yellow peaks, that is EDS spectroscopy. Uh, you can see gold is there, copper is there, uh, all the elements are there. So elements are present, right? Now, I want to filter those images. I have shown you about the energy filtering. So depending on the energy, the electrons will bend at different radius. So we can put the slit and we can select an element specific electron signal and we can form those images where the electrons are present. Understand? Below is that electron energy loss spectrum. Huh? This is a black line below, below left corner, left below. So this line is a electron energy loss spectrum and uh, these windows, a red uh, hash hashed region in the left bottom corner, green, red and blue, there are different slit sizes where they, they are put at corresponding region of that energy filtering uh, slit, okay. And using those energy regions means those energy loss electrons, we have made those element specific images which is there on the top right corner, top right, red is gold green is copper, purple is oxygen, blue is silicon, okay. Now these are the just part of those full complete images but the progression is like this. Now you can see where the, that the gold and copper they are present at the same places, okay, same height in fact. Oxygen you can see a rich oxygen signal on the top where the native oxide layer was there, okay. And the silicon is there on the substrate, very rich silicon signal and it with the oxygen signal which is showing that silicon crisp silicon wafer and native silicon oxide layer is there. Below where that yellow color 20 nanometer is written that is a composite image. It is showing a complete image with element specific information. Now what it is showing? If you see from the top, the top is top is the oxygen. Uh, the oxygen there are three elements only oxygen, copper and gold. So there is an oxygen rich layer which is basically silicon oxide layer on top of that I mean if you go below towards the bottom there is a mixture of green and red dots okay which is the gold copper alloy and then at the bottom most part there is also some blue signature and red and green signature so at the bottom means it is basically the top of the gold copper layer where gold is missing means it is giving the information that the Oxygen exposure reacts with the carbon, uh, sorry, reacts with the copper, but gold doesn't react with the oxygen, okay? So the surface becomes copper rich and it makes copper oxygen, copper oxide. So that is the uh, information no other technique can, work, huh, can get, and uh, we are planning to publish these results. Next, please. Uh, this is a collaborative work with one of our users. They brought a uh, very beautiful sample of uh, <coughs> aluminum nitride uh, and, uh, wires, nano wires. You can see the low magnification and high resolution images. 
you can see the refraction pattern and uh, this uh, high resolution image showing is that uh, they are uh, uh, defectless and single crystal ones. ones. Now uh, they have seen, okay, these particles, these materials, they are interested in uh, photoelectrochemical water splitting applications. And they found it, they used to be very efficient, uh, about, uh, they obtained about 17% uh, conversion of uh, photons into electrons, electron, uh, electron photon, electron um, uh, hole, uh, electron hole uh, in the circuit, which was used to make uh, water splitting. And one, the reason they found is that uh, uh, you can see there is these uh, different uh, peak fitting they are shown. So uh, this is a photoluminescence spectrum and it gives very rich and diverse photoluminescence spectrum. And because of that, the absorption in the solar light is, uh, happens in a very broad range and it is very efficiently converted because the material is a single crystal nature. So there are very less recombination sites in the material itself. So most of the charge generated it is given out uh, to the uh, electrolyte uh, electrolyte and this interface and the photoelectrochemical water splitting is achieved. Uh, you can see in this uh, graph that blue spot is there. So they are showing its uh, photoluminescence of that material. Next is, it is published in uh, General of Power Sources. Uh, yeah, this is another application point of view uh, which is very interesting for the chemistry. In fact, nuclear chemistry, radioactive chemistry, uh, so many people are uh, working for a very efficient disposal of nuclear waste. Now, nuclear fission reaction uh, produces so many of the uh, elements. One of them is strontium. Now, strontium is highly water soluble. So, very slight exposure to water, any leak, it will, uh, it will, it will, uh, it will leak it to the environment. It will be very hard to, very hard to separate from there. Uh, so, uh, from those water solutions, if uh, there are some materials you can specifically absorb those strontium ions, then it will be very useful. So, one of our colleagues collaborators, they were working on sodium potassium vernicite materials, which are the layered materials where an MnO6 oxide are mixed there, and in between, the sodium and or potassium ions hydrated with H2O, and these sodium and potassium ions, they can be exchanged, ion exchange with strontium ions. Yeah. Now, they have performed these uh, studies, including XRD study, uh, uh, radio chemistry studies, and uh, one, uh, all these studies were used, uh, were performed uh, by a natural isotope, okay, which is not radioactive. That is very important because uh, we don't uh, perform any radioactive measurements, we don't have those facilities. So, uh, natural isotopes are used for these studies, and uh, from the EM images, you can see the left panel, left column is a low magnification image, the center column is a high resolution image, and the right column is diffraction pattern. Okay, so the, uh, the center column, you can see that there are uh, lattice fringes are there. So these are the particles of this burnished material, uh, and the bottom two images, bottom two columns, uh, bottom two rows are strontium ion exchanged these vernicide materials. Now if you focus on these diffraction spots on the top and bottom, okay, uh, especially in the potassium KMO, potassium vernicide material, the after uh, strontium ion exchange, those spots have become very broad, okay. So means uh, uh, there is some lattice diffraction introduced because uh, this strontium has got into those interlayer spaces. Huh? So um, uh, this gives uh, credible evidence of what is happening and the, basically the mechanism of that. So you can uh, optimize it, optimize your conditions, and modify the conditions as per the requirements. Huh? Because the seeing is a believing. Next step please. For the biology interesting faculty uh, and uh, this would be very interesting. Now, uh, one uh, user, uh, Dr. Ayalulu Morali, A. Morali from Pondicherry University, they were interested in this PTR uh, RNA polymerase system. They have a model structure to do different, perform different uh, model studies. Hmm. I don't know very intricate details about that, but 
what experiment we did and what we understood together is the following. Now, this is a protein which has some structure, okay, some shape basically. Every protein it is a big molecule and depending on this uh, atomic uh, atomic uh, structure and all, uh, they have certain shapes. Now, those shapes change with the pH and so many other variables. They were experimenting with the change in pH. They are used to create different pH. One is slightly basic pH 7.9, another is pH acidic 5. Now, what their interest was, how the configuration changes, which is interesting for the corresponding changes in this behavior, okay, for the, for its uh, biochemical uh, reaction, or huh? biochemical important reactions. Now, what they perform is, they perform molecular dynamic simulation using this Gromax code and uh, molecular dropping studies. Huh? So they have they have, uh, they have calculated energy landscape uh, uh, pattern for these at different pH levels, and there are two energy minima when it was pH seven point nine and with pH five only one energy landscape was there. So <clears throat> how it relates with the TM? Now we, we, uh, with that configuration which was arrived at by molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, the configurations were uh, uh, also identified from the TM images actually. Uh, they have made these TM samples, uh, stained TM samples, uh, staining was done at uh, different pH values and those TM grids were seen in a low resolution electron microscopy images. Now this TM image you can see, you can see the small small four uh, rectangular red boxes so those are the individual, those polymerase protein particles are there, which when I enlarge it, it looks like uh, a letter of a C letter, huh? or the crescent moon kind of thing. This is one of the configurations. Now these images record hundreds of images, okay, hundreds of images, and in the study they have used 5,000 such particles. And there was typically around 10 to 20, 10 to 20 uh, party useful particles in one image. So that much uh, manual level uh, it was done, and then those images were fed to a, single, uh, a software, single particle analysis reconstruction software, and they have identified these uh, six patterns, okay, six, config six configuration of those particles here, and by those uh, uh, this thing and uh, the comparison between the molecular and the simulations, they have arrived to they have, uh, they have uh, uh, evidence they have got the evidence that this kind of thing. Uh, uh, this kind of configuration changes happen at those different pH levels. Okay, so that is uh, published in scientific reports. Uh, next, please. Okay, this is not our work, this is not our career, but just uh, it is an interesting, very interesting. So, uh, I have just uh, taken this material from this reference, uh, Nature Review articles, uh, Nature Materials. So, in fact, uh, this was uh, an um, this was a uh, electron, uh, you know, uh, the chip, chip element, okay, uh, semiconductor chip element, and uh, they have characterized using scan, scanning transmission electron microscope. So, as I told you, on the specimen, they will make, they will prepare very thin specimen, uh, around uh, 10 to 20 nanometer, 10, 10 to 20 nanometer thick specimen, okay, and then they will uh, make a very fine probe of one angstrom or below one angstrom. And then they will shine that probe pixel by pixel. They will scan it pixel by pixel, and uh, that uh, energy. This is a yield spectrum of oxygen cage. Okay, and at every pixel. Now this is uh, the data of uh, this line, that green circle no? around that line. That spectra shown here. How the oxygen signals are changing. So where is the oxygen? Where is not the oxygen? You can see here, they at the below, at the bottom, there is silicon substrate the, where the oxygen signal is negligible. Okay? Then as you go up, 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 there is an SiO2 layer. The SiO2 layer, you can see the oxygen signal is very prominent. Okay? And then beyond that, there is there, this is the SiO2, SiO2 uh, gate, huh? and uh, uh, this then oh sorry amorphous silicon it is a gate uh, element and uh, that is again you can see on the top there is no oxygen but you can see here that during the transition how the oxygen concentration is changing there is no abrupt change okay where the center to 
since the center two points there are there is lot of oxygen and then slowly that the interface is converting into pure silicon so correspondingly correspondingly the oxygen concentration is coming down so this kind of interesting stuff is coming down uh, i think i have come towards the end of uh, my presentation uh, next please so in conclusion basically the tm animal first is at a small scale there is a fundamental to understand and harness the benefit of the physics at a small scale and uh, this also helps in further pushing the limits by making the characterization technique and manipulation technique better because we get better insight of it because seeing is the delivery next please so the uh, beyond that uh, if you or anybody of you are interesting uh, interested to use the facilities <coughs> i will be happy to help you and uh, no more you can go to our website uh, we have several centers and all those centers have a uh, link to this www.csr.id.in now thank you very much for uh, listening thank you sir uh, thank you sir you explained the principle of tam uh from the very beginning and that was very nice uh we also explained the condition for the specimen uh and also explained the uh, application of tm in the different uh, field of science now uh participant can ask questions any question from the participants i have one question can i please yes ma'am Sir, there are certain defects like point defects and line defects and all. Can we detect all type of defects from TEM? Um, mostly point. Uh, if you see in a uh, uh, conventional TEM, point defects are uh, very difficult to uh, difficult to obtain. However, the dislocations that you can see, here, so the, there are the form of uh, say uh, extended point defects, you can see. those can be easily characterized and in fact uh, metallurgists that they can uh, routinely collect characterize them so uh, yes line defect definitely yes uh, and uh, yeah so sir can you defect to characterize okay thank you sir one uh, one question is uh, is it possible to do tam or hr tam analysis for the magnetic nanoparticles uh, it is uh, uh, very difficult it is difficult and in fact uh, we don't do here because of the given problem no because we use a lot of samples so if you put nano magnetic nanoparticles so what happens is slowly they go and they can deposit in that magnetic poles okay so they will remove the pole edge uh, deformation ha huh? so slowly your uh, resolution goes poor and poor and poor that is very difficult to clean very very difficult because nanoparticles and microparticles they don't just remove like that okay sir Uh, any other question people, from the people do but people do people yes. do study there is no problem as such i mean uh, those who uh, those who choose they study but in our center we don't do that is the that is the information so many other people they do that. okay sir any other question from the participants you can uh, uh, write in chat box also Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's a very useful talk. I would like to ask that: Is there any special precaution to be taken for the magnetic samples by uh, doing the tem? Um, special precaution means uh, uh, those who do generally they they may use uh, the their uh, specialty grids are there. Ah, uh, uh, they can use those grids, or the materials can be embedded into some resin. but again there is a danger of uh, because the resin it sometimes gets overheated and it melts in this uh, high energetic electronium so chunks can come out uh, but yes uh, there are ways to do it uh, so many people do it and if you see about uh, larger if you want to study the magnetic domains per se then there is a entirely different kind of technology so it is called orange microscopy it is a low magnetic low magnetic field microscopy Uh, with the uh, larger with a uh, wide gap uh, pole pieces and then you can actually study magnetic field within the material okay yeah so i don't know which kind of magnetic materials you are talking about but both things are possible 
thank you so much for your uh now i request uh, to all participants uh, please switch on your video okay done टिंग I express my heart felt gratitude to our principal ma'am, all the heads, uh, participants for their presence and participation. My heartful thank to the organizing committee and technical committee for their whole partner in the success of this session. Thank you very much once again. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, our tomorrow session will start at 11:30 am and uh, our is dr neera chorashia deputy librarian central library iit delhi and topic will be uh, e resources for the academic excellence and the last uh, evaluatory session is also scheduled after the first session of uh, the morning session thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you all okay thank you